Okay guys, I know that's clickbaity title, but if you have clicked on this, I promise you, give me a couple of minutes, this will improve your life with Cloud Shell. Okay, so in PowerShell land, I've got a, a bit of code here and I wanna point out a setting. So I've got a function called test file existence here. And all this thing is gonna do is check if a file actually exists. And if it does, it should say file found path or file not found path. But there is a thing here that is a little bit different in this code. And that's this line here for write verbose. Um, so let's see what happens when we run this. I have a directory that's got some files in it, some files like file one, file two, and so on and so forth. If I go and run this block of code here, just to run this test file existence, and then actually just look for file one.txt and file A, I know that file one does exist, but file A does not exist. But let's go and run this. In fact, let's go and run this first without the verbose switch. You'll notice I get nothing. I get no output. You get nothing! Because these outputs have been specified as right verbose. If I go and throw on the verbose switch now at the end of it, what happens is I actually get an output. Essentially, it is actually writing these lines. This is a common trope inside PowerShell, and it's a very common trope that you find inside Azure, which is kind of not suppressing just errors, but actually suppressing output. Let me show you something in Azure. A few moments later. So I'm over here on my Azure portal, and what I'm going to do is create myself a new resource group just to do this test and just to show you something. So let's go into resource group here. I'll do it manually. We'll call it temp. We'll leave it in East US. We will hit create. Great. Okay. Now I want to go to GitHub. So here in my GitHub, I have my AZ-104 repository. This is what I use to teach some AZ-104 classes. I'm just going to grab the, uh, the, S the HTTPS link here for it, and I'm going to drop into the Cloud Shell. I'm going to pull this down because you can do git clone, and pop that inside there, just to pull this into my Cloud Shell. There's some stuff that I want to go and grab from inside here, more specifically an ARM template. Okay, so we just go into that path of that git repository, and inside here I have some templates. And inside these templates, I've got some templates that I use for demos. Now, there's one here called VM Custom Script, which is perfectly fine. CD VM Custom Script, ls that. We've got an Azure Deploy.json. If you've seen some of my videos before, if we just run code, we can see inside here, this ARM template has actually got a deployment for a virtual machine in it. That's cool. Let's go and close this down. This is not the point. The point here is what happens when I deploy this thing. So I'm just going to run new AZ resource group deployment here, and I'm just going to, oops, not do dash file. We need dash template file to start deploying this. It's going to deploy to the resource group name of temp, and we're going to deploy an admin username of Mike admin and a password over here. Oh, one, two, three, four, and a DNS label prefix of uh, I don't know, test VM. Okay, that'll be perfectly fine at the moment. Now, here's the issue. Look at what's happening here. Okay, right there. I'm deploying an ARM template. This could take a long time to actually deploy, and I can see nothing. My shell is locked up at the moment. Now, I could run this as a background job, and there is a video on scheduled tasks that I've done, so go check that one out. But what do we actually want to see is some kind of output going on here. Now let's try that process again, but slightly different. So let's make another resource group. I'll call this temp2 inside here. I'll hit review and create, and I'll hit create. Now what I'm going to do is in my cloud shell, I'm going to add a slightly special switch to the whole, the whole thing here. So before I run any command, if I go and just pop this in, dash verbose preference equals continue, what this is going to do, it's going to turn on that verbose functionality, not just for one command, but this entire session. Okay, so let's try and rerun this process again. Let's do new AC resource group deployment with Azure deploy.json. Resource group name is temp2. Admin username is Mike admin. Uh, password is that. And we'll set the DNS label prefix as temp mic vm test. And we'll go and run this. Now, 
what we should have is check this out. We've got this verbose output actually coming through. We can see exactly what this thing is actually doing. So it's looking at the template, it's valid, checking the template deployment status, it's provisioning these IP addresses, it's working and crunching through all of this process. So I can actually see some output, I can see something that's actually happening when I'm doing something like an ARM template deployment. Way, way, way nicer here, just so that we know something is actually crunching and working along. Now we could see the same sort of stuff if we went and click the bell icon up here and we have a look at the events in the activity log. We could also see this by actually looking at the uh, resource group itself. But it's nice to know that our shell hasn't actually crashed and it is actually doing something. Now if you close your cloud shell at this point and open it again, you'll need to add in that same verbose preference equals continue for the session. Uh, for it to be turned on for the next session as well. We could also use this for individual commands, dash verbose, but just remember this, not all commands have verbose output because the verbose output, if we look here, has to be written into the code of the command you're actually using. Normally, if it's a nice Microsoft command and it's something that you've got like new dash AZ resource group deployment, then yes, that will normally have that built into it. But if you're using random scripts you find on the internet, they might not be as tidy. You might not have verbose output. So this works for most of the things you're going to do, but just bear in mind that it won't work for absolutely everything, but it should improve your life here with PowerShell and that's how you improve your life with PowerShell Cloud Shell and actually see some outputs for what you're doing. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll join me next time. Goodbye.